So shout out to T from TV who just broke this story this evening. Uh, Martel Holt is at it again. Uh, we knew he was probably going to be upset that Melody went to LA for that TikTok live and she brought her children, her mother, her security guard and, you know, her uh, team that helps her. Um, so I'm not going to go through everything in detail, but I do want to point out some of the BS uh, that Martel has accused Melody of. Um, so he, one, is accusing Melody of continuing to physically punish the youngest child. Um, so that was a part of the claim. And then um, it says the court ordered on February 28th, 2023, that the father has the right of first refusal for purposes of the party's identification. If the parties cannot agree, occasional nights with the grandparents shall be considered once per quarter. And then um, it says that the plaintiff, Melody, is in contempt of this order by allowing the minor children to visit with their grandmother, Vanessa Tracy, at least once a month without giving defendants right of first refusal. Now, I don't know about you, but that is absolutely crazy. To control when my kids can see their grandmother, I don't even know if there's a word for that. Um, yeah, that's just crazy to me. Um, then he says that the plaintiff is further in violation of this order by leaving the minor children in the care of Jason Moore, a man she refers to as her security guard. Um, it says without giving the defendant the right of first refusal. So he's upset and mad about Jason, which we know he's probably watching her lives over there on TikTok. He's watching her rub on Jason's arm. So of course he's upset. Um, it says the plaintiff refuses to provide the defendant with the grandmother's contact information. Therefore he has no way to communicate with his children anytime they are with her. Patty. Uh, number five, it says that Moore, so he's talking about Jason, routinely places the lives and welfare of the children at risk by allowing the 11 and 12 year old to drive a car on city and state roads. Number six, he says that the plaintiff's mother also places the lives and welfare of the children at risk by allowing the 11 and 12 year old to drive her car on city and state roads. Um, then it says the plaintiff allows Moore, who is a married man to another woman to refer to himself as daddy to the children. Um, it says in violation of the court's parenting clause, which have been attached to and incorporated in at least two previous orders of this court. Uh, number eight, Plaintiff allows Moore to spend the night with the children present. Plaintiff also allows Moore to travel with her and the children. Uh, so it sounds like he's mad that Jason went to Florida with them, rode on the helicopter. He's mad Jason went to L.A. and uh, travels with Mel wherever she goes. Um, it also goes on to say that Plaintiff and Moore appear to be in a relationship other than that of an employer and employee. She allows him to come into the house and stay while the children are asleep. She cuddles on the couch with him and he rubs her feet. So if the kids are asleep, how do you know, Martel, that Jason is there? Mm, okay, interesting. Um, it says, and they tell each other they love each other via text messages. Additionally, they have been observed kissing in the middle of the night when they think all of the children are asleep. At least one child has observed this and was very upset that her mother would have a relationship with a married man. Uh, so it says allowing a member of the opposite sex with whom she is engaged in a romantic relationship to spend the night while the children are home is a violation of this court's parenting clause which has been attached and incorporated in at least two previous orders of this court uh number 10 says the plaintiff continues to provide 
pictures of the minor children to her assistant Lauren and her mother Tracy to post on social media and allow them to be seen on live posts. Um, we knew that was coming, but I just want to know where in the court order does it state that Melody's family, her, you know, grandmother can't post her grandchildren. Um, imagine being a grandmother and being bound to, uh, the terms of a narcissist. It, it just seems that, you know, Martel, although he's no longer with Melody, they are divorced and have been so for several years. He still wants to control her life. He wants to control what's going on in her house. And at this point, it's just downright ridiculous. Um, it also goes on to say that the plaintiff who has decision making authority over routine medical issues refuses to provide the children with a pediatrician or primary care physician. The children have no routine medical checkups. I find that odd. Like if kids play sports, most of the times they have to get physical. So I just, I find that kind of strange. Uh, but number 12, plaintiff continues to take the minor children out of town for extended periods of time during the school year. These trips have no educational or cultural benefits. Two of the children are struggling academically and are forced to miss school. These trips are also force them to miss scheduled sports and cut into defendants custodial time. Um, it goes on to say, wherefore premises and consider defendant prays that this honorable court will a order that the plaintiff Melody Sharik Holt to appear at a time and date to be set by the court to show cause if any she may have why we should not she should not be punished as for a civil and criminal contempt with respect to the matter and things set out herein above that upon said hearing the court will find said plaintiff melody sheree holt in contempt of court and will meet out such punishment as the honorable court may deem just and proper uh it says b award the defendant reimbursement for any and all attorney fees. Now the question is, did he ever pay Melody's attorney fees because she won that in the uh, previous uh, trial that they had. Um, and then it says, see, enter such other orders and decrees as may be reasonable and proper in this action. Respectfully submitted this 26th day of September, 2024. Now here's what I'm questioning. How does he know that she's texting Jason and telling him that she loves him. Um, is he paying the kids to spy and to look at her messages and come back and report to him? Uh, we remember where Martel would, you know, drill the kids, ask them questions and record them. Um, we've seen that in the past. So it almost sounds like he's still uh, drilling them for information and asking them questions about what's going on in the home. But I got to say, you know, I don't know how she deals with this. Um, and I don't understand, you know, how does he know all this information? Like I said, how do you know about the text messages? How do you know that this man is spending the night or he's there while the kids are asleep? How would you know that um so drop down in the comments you guys let me know your thoughts about all this and as always i thank you all for watching and listening and i'll talk to you in the next video